Ladies and gentlemen, guardians and champions, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving headfirst into the thrilling world of Destiny 2, where the line between light and darkness blurs, and epic battles await at every turn. But hold on tight, because we're about to uncover one of the game's most electrifying game modes. Gambit! If you've ever dreamed of harnessing the power of the Traveler while outsmarting your foes, then Gambit is the answer to your guardian prayers. It's a high-stakes, heart-pounding game mode that blends the best of PvE and PvP into an adrenaline-fueled experience that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Now you might be asking yourself, what makes Gambit so special? Well, my friends, Gambit is where strategy meets skill, where teamwork reigns supreme, and where the fate of the universe hangs in the balance. Picture this. You and your fire team are pitted against another team of guardians and waves of hostile enemies, all while racing against the clock. It's a game of wits and precision. You'll have to bank moats, defeat powerful foes, and summon your very own primeval to challenge the opposing team. But be careful, because they won't make it easy for you. Expect unexpected invasions, powerful blockers, and nail-biting moments where victory can slip right through your fingers. Get ready, Guardians, because the Gambit experience awaits. Join me on this epic journey through Destiny 2's most thrilling game mode. Together we'll conquer the enemy, secure our victories, and stand tall as legends in the world of Gambit. Let's dive right in. So, introduction out of the way, what's Gambit? Well, Gambit is a 4v4 PvE PvP mix game mode where you start out PvE, gaining a certain amount of what we call moats, or essentially tokens for every enemy you kill, with elites and what we call majors, which are periodically spawning mini-bosses slash buffed elites, dropping more moats with basic enemies only dropping one. Every time you bank or deposit your moats in the middle of the map, you send what's called a blocker to the enemy side, which is a buffed enemy that blocks the enemy team from depositing moats until they kill that enemy. At five moats, it's a small blocker, sending a taken goblin to the other side. At ten moats, it's a medium blocker, sending a taken phalanx to the other side. And finally, at fifteen moats, you send a major taken knight to the other side. All blockers sent to the other side do not drop any moats upon being killed. However, if two blockers stack up on either side at once, then they will start draining moats, or essentially siphoning moats from one team to the team that sent the blockers. At 40 and 80 moats deposited, a portal will open up, which allows one player to invade the other team's area to hinder their progress by denying moats. The invader will have an overshield, be friendly to the opponent's enemies, and be able to see the locations of every opposing player at the cost of being announced and glowing red for easy visibility to the opposing team. If an enemy invades, though it might seem redundant, stay away from the middle. Unless you are very PvP-oriented or a Gambit veteran, it's every invader's dream for someone to be fighting blockers or to try and bank when a Guardian invades. Instead, stay on one side of the map. Each map is split into thirds and try to keep it where you have good visibility of your third, but you're closed off visually from the other thirds and the middle of the map. As an invader, typically there's a handful of methods that yield high success. One, using supers, which is pretty easy in this game mode as you're farming ads between invasions, so you typically can get a super per invasion. Two, using snipers. As heavy ammo boxes spawn after every wave of enemies, with the heavy boxes also giving special ammo, each team has the opportunity to fill up on both heavy and special ammo throughout the match, making snipers particularly deadly. Three. Finally, you can use heavy ammo, which is often seen via lock-on rocket launchers or sword skating in order to flank the enemies. Each guardian you kill drops three moats, or as many moats as they were carrying, and moats dropped from guardians killed by invaders tend to despawn faster than guardians killed by PvE enemies. Once you invade, you get 30 seconds on the other side before you're sent back. There are three reasons for you being sent back. Time limit expiration, dying on the other side, or having a team wipe on the enemy side. Keep in mind, if you invade while the enemy is invading your side, a team wipe of only three players will not trigger you getting sent back. 
And as such, you can actually kill more than four guardians by killing two or more of the same guardian if you manage to camp their spawn after the respawn timer is up. When the bank is full with 100 moats, the primeval, a powerful Taken, will be summoned in their arena, alongside a plethora of Taken minions, while two primeval envoys will spawn at one of the fronts. At this time, you can no longer lose or gain moats if you hit 100 moats. The opposing team's invasion portal will begin to activate periodically. At this point, the goal of the game is to kill the primeval before the other team is able to kill their own. Killing the primeval envoys as soon as possible will remove the invulnerability shield from the primeval, enabling damage. Invasions now serve the purpose of healing the opposing team's primeval upon killing a guardian to set back their progress towards winning the round. So, with the basics out of the way, let's talk loadouts. Now, I'm not going to get into specific weapons, as some people have ride-or-die weapons, specialized loadouts, or are just memeing. Instead, we'll be talking generalizations and discussing abilities. Personally, I keep a PV main weapon, typically a Catalyst Outbreak Perfected or a Quicksilver Storm, a PvP Secondary in the form of a Sniper Rifle, and finally a Boss or Guardian Super Resistance Melter. Either a Lock-On Rocket Launcher or a Grenade Launcher if I'm feeling jiggy with it that day. Do people even say that any... Anyways, it's essentially dealer's choice as far as weapons go. Subclasses, however, it's a bit more clear-cut. Now keep in mind, I'm a big advocator of the original trio of subclasses in Destiny. Stasis has its place, but in my opinion, only the Titan Strand is viable, with the others kind of falling off in everything but special builds and for movement-based utility. First off, we're starting with Hunter. Keep in mind, these suggestions are entirely PvP and Gambit-centric. You can pick literally anything and succeed in PvE, so we won't worry about that. Class ability and movement modes are dealer's choice, but as far as subclasses go, I'd recommend Solar Subclass with Deadshot if you have a skate build on. Otherwise, Marksman is your best bet as it's a near-guaranteed one-shot, and with the knock em down aspect, it's practically tripled the duration of Deadshot. Arc subclass is personally not my cup of tea, and I don't even honestly have a build for it, but just based on what I've seen in high-octane PvP. Gathering Storm is good for a throw and forget Super with the potential of killing across the map, and Arc Staff is good for deflecting projectiles while you close in the distance. Void subclass is perfect as Spectral Blades, and the Vanishing Step aspect for dodges will make you invisible. While more experienced Guardians will still see you, as you stop glowing while invisible, you can typically dispatch a Guardian with a sniper rifle, or sneak up near them and use one of the bow supers to take out two or three Guardians. Stasis subclass. Oh boy, I hate going against this subclass, and that's how I know it's good. Silence and Squall are still a good choice for any loadout for a reason. Between the damaging Squall, which can have post-mortem kills, or Silence with its flash freeze all but guaranteeing kills, you can't go wrong with this subclass. Thread subclass, I don't wanna. Fine, the whip is rather good up close, so if you can close the distance between the mobility and range of Silk Strike, it's a pretty solid choice for a team wipe. Though if you can't close the gap, any other subclass would be a better choice. Any other subclass. Secondly, we're moving on to Titan. Now, I'd actually recommend the Rally Barricade if you want to be weapon dependent. But Towering Barricade is a solid catch, all for blocking lock-on rockets or across-the-map sniper fire. Sunbreaker only really has one option. I said it only has one real option. Fine. Hammer of Saul is obviously meta with the bonk build, but if you really feel the need to spin to win, Burning Maul has the same drawbacks as the Thread subclass on the Hunter. As for Striker, Thundercrash is good if you can aim it correctly, but given the amount of people who somehow accidentally or for some too big brain for me to realize method end up slowing their Thundercrash into more of a Thundercrawl, I'll have to recommend Fists of Havoc for this one. But if you don't suffer from the crayon eating disorder, Thundercrash is not only good for surprise kills, but it'll close the gap while making you hard to hit. Sentinel is a solid all-rounder. Once again, having a red-headed stepchild in the form of Ward of Dawn, while it's good if you're being invaded, the Sentinel Shield is just better, in my opinion, if you're invading. 
the stasis subclasses. Well, to be fairly honest, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use this build after release. Not to say it's bad, as stasis tends to be the best catch-all for any build thanks to the almost overpowered flash freeze mechanic, but I just honestly don't have any recommendation with this one. Finally, the one viable strand subclass. For Gambit, anyways. Now, once again, it's a very movement-based subclass. While Blade Fury is most certainly interesting, and is unholy amounts of good if you and the other Guardian are on even playing fields. Literally. It's outclassed if there's any large height difference, especially once you factor in the sheer amount of effort of getting this subclass compared to just Hammer of Saul homing for the skissued. Finally, Warlock. Class ability is up to you. I'd recommend Healing Rift, but Empowering Rift has many potential use cases, and Phoenix Dive is a niche I personally haven't explored. Dawnblade, ish. Deadly at medium to close range, but a pittance at longer ranges. Daybreak struggles without experience, and while Well of Radiance can control an entire Iron Banner or Crucible lobby if you have no teamwork, with how widely available heavy ammo is in this, for the same reason I want to caution Ward of Dawn users. Well of Radiance is just a Ward of Dawn without any guaranteed protection, unless you're confident in your gunplay abilities in a world full of Jotuns, Jallerhorns, and just lock-on rockets and sniper rifles. You gotta be experienced or just plain lucky. Stormcaller. An interesting case. Chain Lightning is an ultimate you cannot cancel. Not that I know of, at least. Would be embarrassing if you can. And I claim this disables all types of upper movement as you cannot skate. But you get the trade-off of being able to teleport around, making lock-ons practically useless. And throwing off aim of a lot of guardians. Chaos Reach is good if you have sight of them, but if they're hiding like they do in more skilled lobbies, it's all but useless as it's short lived and without any movement options. Void Walker. I don't even want to talk about it, but it's here, so let's do it. Nova Bomb Vortex is a good combo with heavy weapons, and Cataclysm is good for surprise attacks. Haven't used Nova Warp in a while, but it's a movement option with an optional eruption, so it's usable. Stasis subclass. Come on. You know Winter's Wrath. Even if you've only played one game of Crucible, you've likely seen this lobby destroying Team Wiper. It's a solid meta for Warlock. Has ease of use, and essentially you don't see this and don't get instantly flash frozen. Solid pick, thread subclass, Needlestorm, Needlestorm? I mean, if you have given up on life and have no hope in hell and no chance at using any of the other supers. Actually, not bad assuming you hit it. It's essentially a one-time use, pop-and-forget super that can kill enemies via pot shots, or just kind of fizzle out as quickly as you cast it. Now let's talk strategies. This one will be short and simple. If you're good at PvP, you want to either anchor or invade. I find myself commonly either invading to try and kill the enemies before they kill my team and wipe moats, or I anchor in the middle to hopefully pick off invaders as soon as they spawn. If you're not good at PvP, focus on adds and bank as much as humanly possible. Now, if neither team is close to 40 moats for the initial invasion, then you can save up to 10 or 15 for more solid banks, but 5 for a small blocker is always better than losing 5 to the void, especially if you can bank with teammates. Be smart about when and how you bank. Got a teammate? See if you can puppy guard them and follow them when they have 15 moats or look like they're going to bank as you can abuse the drained moats mechanic to get easy moats and more than make up if you only deposit 5 especially against more novice teams that either hyper-focus blockers or don't pay attention to them at all. The multi-bank method is especially effective at the beginning of the game if you bait or let the other team bank first, just to steal their initial banked moats. You can also play what I call mind games with people. You know that tip I gave earlier in the video, be careful on banking or killing blockers if there's an invader? Yeah, that counters me, but guess what? I'm rarely countered. I've team wiped people because they either hyper-focus on the blockers or try and bank when I invade just for them to either either lose 15 moats right as I join, or lose extra time as the blockers still live, and I just assassinated them. If you're not wanting to pay attention to these tips, I'll give you a guideline. Bank often, bank with friends, pay attention to your teammates, your own skills, and your invaders' playstyles. Remember that there are a set amount of spawns the invaders will be at. 
typically at the opposite side of the most players, in one of three main spawn points, and always have enough, even if it's only a medium blocker, to bank before, or as someone's invading to bait out the enemy team. And there you have it. If you follow these tips, learn something new, or simply have a new perspective on Gambit, you'll get more wins in no time, even against more experienced players. Best part about this, Gambit is one of the quickest ways to farm vendor exotics in the form of the Drifter, along with some of the easiest repeatable dailies possible from a vendor if you're looking for bright dust. Learn something new? Drop a subscribe and like, and maybe drop a comment if you want to see my next video. With that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.